Okay, let's talk about possessive pronoun specifiers. Uh, this could be a lengthy video, so yeah, brace yourself. Anyway, um, you already know how to make the possessive pronouns and their forms, as well as you know how to make specifiers by using whatever affixes we have, right? Um, but what if we put them together? Yeah, so what if those t we've mixed those two together? Then we get something completely new. We get the, the uh, possessive pronoun specifiers that are specific to an object or a noun, right? And that's also, it, I mean, you can ask yourself the question, why is it that we have possessive pronouns that are imong and imo, uh, for example, imo or imoha or ato or atoa, like right here in the left, we have something like ako, ako, a. Why is it that we have two types? Well, this is going to answer that question. This video will answer that question. All right. So you already know what specifiers do. You can kind of see where this is all going to come into play, and I will explain that. Starting with um, the specifiers that get attached to these possessive pronouns, they get, um, when, these spec when these possessive pronouns get attached a specifier, right, that object that's being specified is now um, specific to that, pers uh, to that possessive pronoun, if that makes sense. So an object... I mean, if, an, if a possessive pronoun gets attached a specifier, the noun that it gets related to is now specific to that possessive pronoun. There you go. So how do we know when to use them? Well, there are triggers, okay? Just as in the regular specifiers for regular nouns, we have triggers as well for the possessive pronouns. And these triggers are caused by demonstrative pronouns, very, very, very common, okay? Demonstrative pronouns are very common triggers that cause these specifiers to be used in, or the possessive forms, or possessive pronoun forms, as well as the distance-existence relationships, or the location time words, which I put asterisks around because I will be talking about those in future videos, all right? Because they the distance existence and or location time words they make a chunk not a chunk but they are a part of uh, an important part of the Cebuana language i didn't explain it in the previous series because it's it's too it's just complex so i'm going to explain it with these intermediate ones All right and the examples here will probably um, help you understand the possessive pronoun specifiers and how to use them, how to distinguish between the two, right? And we're only talking about possessive pronouns. So at this point, you should already know how to make them, what to do with them, etc., right? right? This first example sentence, Si mimi ang akong elepante, right? So it's not specific, right? We're just saying a relationship with something that we own, okay? Mimi is my elephant. So, si Mimi ang akong elefante. Mimi is my elephant. It's not a specific kind, you know, it's just, oh yeah, that elephant is Mimi. And, okay, and then Mimi is is my my elephant. There. Right? I can even change this around. I can even say, sila ang akong mga amigo. Or, siya ang akong amigo. Okay, we don't really have a specified person. They're just friends. They're my friends. Or, he is, or she, or it is my friend, right? So, sila ang akong mga amigo, right? Or siya ang akong amigo. Or amiga, or whatever, right? So, it's just not specified. It's it's just simply showing the relationship, the possession, that they are my friends. Okay? Um, and we're only looking at the, um, the preposition kind of pronouns, right? The next sentence is going to be a little transition, right? For what I'm going to talk about. And it is, Kumusta ba ang imong bana sa ospital? Kagrabe sa iyang aksidente sa motrosiklo? Alright? Kumusta bang, the first sentence is a question. Kumusta bang imong bana sa ospital? Yeah. So, it's only, it's not specific. Again, it's just your husband, right? Imong bana, your husband. We didn't say imohang bana, okay? Meaning, Oh, out of many husbands, that husband that we're talking about. Okay, maybe you were a polygamist. Maybe you married so many guys. Maybe you're a slut. I don't know. So, you're, you're it's just non-specific. We just know you have a husband. Okay, so that's your husband. Imong bana, right? Imong bana. 
Um, so it was with the how's your husband from the hospital, right? That accident was pretty serious in the motorcycle, right? Kagrabe sa iyang aksidente. So, sa iyang aksidente. Now, here is where it, begets, uh, it gets more specific. Notice how we had to use the sa here to specify something, right? All right, so that sa, every time you have that sa, it's going to specify something. It's going to specify something out of whatever many things, right? And that sa triggers a specifier to be used. Sa iya hang accidente. Okay, so his particular accident, that accident that we're talking about, it could have been that, the situation could have been that there were multiple accidents that happened that day. It could have been that, the husband was just a, a very accident prone person, a very clumsy person. So he could have had different accidents in the past or different accidents in that day that he was involved. But we're talking about the particular accident that got him in the hospital. Okay, it, see how it now becomes more specific. And that's what makes the specifier different than just a regular relationship or ownership, possession, possessive pronoun. Right? Kagrabe sa iyang aksidente sa motorcyclo. Oh, okay. So that accident that he, that she or he was talking about regarding the motorcycle accident, right? So now it became specific. And again, the rule is sa. Definitely sa will trigger the specifier to be used. Sa iya hang aksidente. Okay. <clears throat> uh, next sentence here is two parts again. So the next one I have. Imoha ba ningunting a rosa? Right. Imoha ba ningunting a rosa? Now, we have a specifier used with imo. Imoha, right? Imoha ba ningunting a rosa? Imoha ba ningunting a rosa? Gamiton ko sa, right? Gamiton ko sa. I'm gonna use it for a bit, okay? So, are these your pink scissors? I'm gonna use it for a bit, or I'll use it for a bit, right? So, but we wanna focus on this part. Imoha ba ningunting a rosa? Are these your pink scissors? So this this sentence is very straightforward, right? What's our focus? You already know what the focus is because ning marks gunting a rosa, right? Ning a gunting a rosa, these pink scissors, this pink scissors, right? Imoha ba, so, and it makes sense because imoha is in their ergative, right? So, but we want to focus here on uh, imoha and ning. What was one of our trigger to use the, um, the specifier? It was... It was this uh, demonstrative pronoun, kani, right? Or kini, kani, right? This demonstrative pronoun may force us to use this specifier because now we're talking about a specific pink scissors, right? The, the pink scissors, those those specific pink scissors, I don't know where, but um, um, someone was probably holding these pink scissors that we're talking about, these pink scissors that I'm talking about, the these pink scissors that are somewhere located somewhere, I don't know, but the... These, this, or um, kani, right, is this. So this pink scissors, this pink scissors that we're talking about that is our focus is this one that's being specified, hence um, imoha. We have to add a specifier to imoha, okay? I, I'm hoping you see the relationship with just something being specified in specificity versus just something that's general, right? And that's where we put in our um, specifier affix, uh, the next one is a funny one because this one was actually, um, this one I have a story to tell you about. Tagaasa ka sa atoa, right? Tagaasa ka sa atoa. Right, so first of all, I was in a grocery store, grocery shopping, wearing a, a t-shirt that had something written in Cebuano and one of the cashier or bagging ladies read it and she was from Cebu. And then she spoke to me in Cebuano because she thought I was a foreigner and, or she thought I didn't speak it. And then I spoke to her in Cebu and then she uh, in Cebuano, and she said this question to me. She asked me this question. The gaasaka sa toa. Um, often of times, if you are a fellow Filipino or someone from the Philippines, and you um, talk to somebody who speaks the same language, um, you will be asked this question. Hey, where are you from? The gaasaka sa to. Where are you from? From our place, right? Sa toa meaning from ours, right? From ours. And from ours having the um, connotation or the the implied meaning of our country, right? Where are you from in our country, right? Where are you from from ours, right? Where are you from meaning, where are you from from our country? 
So, taga-asaka sa ato, ah. And of course, I told her I was from Dabao, you know. Taga-Dabao ko. And she was like, oh, okay. But that's just a little side, little notice. If, you know, people are like, if you tell people you're from the Philippines and stuff like that, oh, where are you from? From our place. But anyway, um, again, with here, what we see is sa, sa triggered a specified, act, uh, a, a specified thing, right? Something that was being specified, which in this case is our country, right? Sa ato, a. Um, and that's how we have to use a at the end with ato, ours. It's the inclusive me and you, right? Sa ato, a. Um, what else do I want to talk about this sentence? Eh. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory that it's specified out of many countries, um, in our place, specifically our home, specifically the motherland. Where are you from in our motherland? And the final sentence is, um, Ang katong mga uma-uma dito sa pikas para sa amo a. Ah. Okay? Ang katong mga uma-uma dito sa pikas para sa amo a. Ah. Oh, uh, here we have a one of those distance existence words, right? Kadtong. Well, actually, yeah, one of those uh, demonstrative pronouns. Those things, a distance existence relationship, kadtong, or a demonstrative pronoun in the absolutive, right? Mga uma uma. So those things far away from you and me. Those those whatever. Uh, those in this case, it's the uma uma farm, farmland or whatever land where crops are being raised or livestock right so we'll just call it farm but those farmlands over there at the other side are for us para sa amo a right okay so this person is telling me oh okay those farmlands over there they're on the other side they're for they're for us para sa amo a okay again a amo a but also katong mga uma uma dito those specifically those farmlands on the other side right because there could be so many farmlands in the area we don't know which ones but out of all of out of many of those that specific one on the other side is ours so we have two things here that specifically triggered this um, specifier to be used the a okay sa and katong we have that, okay? So, sa amo a, okay? And I shouldn't have to go over why, you know, they're used with a or ha or whatever. But anyway, I'm ending this now because uh, it's getting a little long. But hopefully this helps you clarify the difference of why we have sometimes ha or ha at the end of possessive, uh, possessive pronouns.